The Meaning of Life by Brianna E. Saunders My name is Brianna Elizabeth Saunders. I've lived in California, Maine, Baltimore, Houston, and Ghana, West Africa. I am the sister of three siblings, a brother, a half-brother, and a half-sister. I am a student, dancer, performer, and friend, but most of all, I am a child of God. In 1985, I came into the world as a daughter of two Scientologist parents. My father had been a member of the Sea Organization in California, an organization for the most dedicated adherents of Scientology, and my mother identified with the religion as well. We moved to Maine when I was about a year and a half old, and my dad began to teach the Scientologist ideas and practices embedded within Diantics to my brother and me when we were old enough to understand. During my third grade year, I began to lose interest in studying Scientology. The religion held nothing for me, and I saw inconsistencies in my dad's study of the religion and the way he interacted with others within his religion. As I entered into high school, questions about the meaning of life began to plague me. I wasn't searching for God, per se, but I wanted to know why I existed and what I was here for. In pursuit of answers, I began to explore different philosophies. I considered serving others as the meaning of life and gave myself to this endeavor. After some time, I realized that serving others could not be the meaning of life as it still left me unsatisfied. I enjoyed myself while I was serving, but deep down, I desired to make more of a lasting impact on the world. Through serving, I could make an impact for the moment and even for decades to come, but there would come a time when the memory of me would perish forever. At that moment, my life would cease to make a difference and all of my efforts would be for nothing. Disheartened, I gave up service as the meaning of life and turned toward the pursuit of pleasure. If my life was to be insignificant on this earth, then at least I would enjoy the relatively few years I had. If I wouldn't be remembered, at least I would have fun. This pursuit was just as unsatisfying as the first. As a result, I dedicated myself to my studies and to my dance training, I hoped to become a ballerina one day, and gave up on finding the meaning of life altogether. During my high school years, my focus became succeeding academically and advancing in my dance training. I was doing well in life by human standards. I was competing at the national level in dance and winning awards and scholarships. Academically, I was doing well, earning mostly A's in my courses. I had yet to discover the meaning of life, but I wasn't searching actively any longer. Life continued as normal, busy but normal, until one seemingly ordinary day in the high school halls. On this day, another girl in my sophomore class invited me to her church's youth group event. I didn't have a lot of interest in attending youth group, but I did have an interest in making a new friend, so I told her I'd go. One Friday evening soon after, I left school bound for my friend's house. We were preparing for an overnight youth event called the Super Bowl that consisted of a series of activities including roller skating, bowling, and a professional ice hockey game. We arrived at the church and boarded the bus with other members of her youth group. We headed towards downtown Portland, Maine and prepared ourselves for a long night of fun and activities. Our first event of the night was an ice hockey game. We watched the game along with hundreds of other youth from around the state of Maine. After the game, a missionary came onto the ice. I was surprised. No one had told me that I was going to hear church stuff at this event, although I guess I could have assumed that I would, given the nature of the event. The missionary began to speak, and his words pierced my heart. What if you were to leave this place tonight, he said, and, God forbid, get hit by a bus and die. Do you know where you would go? I felt fear in the pit of my stomach. I wasn't a bad youth, by society's standards. I made good grades, loved my family, didn't drink, and had never experimented with drugs or sex. I was on track for a successful future, and yet, I knew that even with all of that, I wasn't good enough to earn heaven. As the missionary continued speaking, I began to realize that he was sharing with me the meaning of life that I'd tried so hard to find during my early high school years. 
In the pit of my stomach and the depth of my soul, I realized that he was sharing truth with me and that I needed to accept that truth in order to attain the level of significance that my teenage heart knew existed. He told me that I was a sinner, and I know now from studying scripture that without faith, I can do nothing of value in God's sight. His word says, but without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, Hebrews 11 verse 6. His word goes on to say that all of the good things that people do to try to earn heaven are useless. But we are all like an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are like filthy rags, Isaiah 64 verse 6. Romans 2 verse 23 says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Just by thinking one bad thought or harboring resentment towards another, I've disobeyed God's laws. Disobedience deserves punishment, and God's word tells us what that punishment is. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, Romans 6 verse 23. I learned that night that I could be forgiven of my sins if I trusted in Jesus Christ as my Savior. I must acknowledge, as Isaiah 64 verse 6 says, that all of my good works are worthless in the sight of God. I will never earn heaven and to try to do so would be ridiculously conceited, but as Romans 5 verse 8 says, but God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died as the punishment for my sins. If I accept his death in my place, then I can be brought into a relationship with God and can know for certain that I will be saved from God's judgment when I die. I realized that night that the question wasn't about whether or not I wanted a new religion, but if I would accept the truth that was presented to me that night. My heart and my soul knew that this was truth, and the realization that my questions of eternal significance were being answered was incredible. At the Super Bowl event, youth who wanted to know more about Jesus were invited to come downstairs to another area to find out more. I went and received a tract outlining the gospel belief. After that, the evening continued on without me thinking much more about Jesus or this new faith. I finished the night out with my new friends and arrived home around 6 o'clock the next morning. Exhausted, I threw the tract on my kitchen table and went to bed. When I awoke later that day, my dad approached me. He had seen the tract on the kitchen table and wanted to know what I had gotten myself into. I assured him that I had not signed my soul away to anyone and that I hadn't even given them my address. I just wanted to know more about this religion. My dad didn't forbid me from finding out more, but he did not encourage me either. I began to go to my friend's house after school on Wednesdays so I could go with her family to youth group meetings. Sometime after, my friend's parents began picking me up for church on Sunday mornings. Once I earned my driver's license, I began driving myself to church services. I remember driving home from church one Sunday, praying that I was saved. It was at that moment that I knew that I was. Romans 3 verse 11 says that, there is none who seek after God. Therefore, if I was seeking after God, it must mean that the Holy Spirit was at work in my life, drawing me closer to Him. God was after my heart, and I am eternally grateful that He was. It's been over a decade now since I made the decision to trust in Jesus as my Savior. The Lord has taken me to some incredible places to spread His name including Ghana, West Africa, London, and Houston, Texas. He brought me to Houston nearly five years ago to glorify his name as a member of the Ad Deum Dance Company, and has led me into seminary and a ministry position at my local church since then. Day by day, the Lord is teaching me more about trusting in him and choosing his ways instead of my own. He has led me through numerous apartment and lifestyle changes, and he has shown himself faithful and good in each one. The Lord satisfies me daily with his love and I have complete confidence that when my life on earth is over, I will be with him in heaven forever. I finally have the answer to the missionary's question from that fateful Super Bowl night. Jesus is the answer to that question and so many more.